We've come to try your famous lager. <laughs> Stannard's Pissner for the backwards lager drinker. Is it really true? What's that? <laughs> Eastern women drive the men wild in bed. Yeah, yeah, it's true, man. Like, because, uh, you know, I used to go out with an Eastern lady, you know. Uh, she drove me wild in bed. Yeah. yeah. What did she do? She used to eat crisps and that. <laughs> Christmas Eve, eh? <laughs> so you actually remember it, do you, Gav? Um, sort of, yeah. Did you bring me home? No, you were still there at half twelve when I left. Pint in one hand, a cigar in the other, and some mistletoe sticking out of your fly. <laughs> at least I think it was mistletoe. <laughs> Waste of time that was. Twenty women I must have chatted up. Absolutely nothing. Not even when I started twirling my underpants around my head. <laughs> Last time I got a midnight mass. <laughs> oh, I feel a bit better now I slept it off. Mm. Merry Christmas, Norm. You certainly have. Happy Boxing Day, Gareth. <laughs> Tanley Village Green, deep in rural England, where once a year, despite the controversy, the traditional Tanley fade still flourishes. Seven inches long. For a start, there's tortoise blowing. up in arms about this activity. So how do the people of Tanley answer these allegations of cruelty? Ah, oh, yes, well, one hears uh, similar arguments about uh, cruelty with the Grand National, doesn't one? But as far as I'm concerned, if the tortoises don't enjoy it, they wouldn't compete, would they? <laughs> Meanwhile, in the barn, other activities are in progress. You know, there's still people complain about pitting two evenly matched tortoises against each other. Second round one. I tell you, they're vicious little buggers, they are. One 
particular event is Squire Beaufort's forte. He's been village champion for the last four years. Tortoise conquers. At the end of the day, the villagers gather outside the village pub for the final event. I really don't know what all the fuss is about. It's a fair sporting contest. I mean, after all, we do give the tortoise a full 30 minutes start. hanging baskets. Yeah, this one's a Jehovah's Witness. just heard. So what happened? It's David. He's had a terrible road accident in town. Yes, there are some terrible roads in town. <laughs> was he... was he wearing clean underwear? <laughs> Come on, it's not your fault. A van came out of a side street next to the supermarket and David drove his bike straight into it. Why? <laughs> Why what? Why did he drive his bike into the supermarket? <laughs> he didn't drive it into the supermarket, he drove it into the van. <laughs> oh. Hospitals are in a critical condition. <laughs> I blame the government myself. No, no, no. It's our son David is in a critical condition. Oh. The doctor doesn't hold out much hope. He's got massive brain damage. <laughs> and he's still working as a doctor. These doctors deserve a medal. No, though. no. David has got massive brain damage. Not the doctor. Oh. They're operating on him right now. They told us to come home and make some tea and then they'll ring us when it's finished. When will they know that you finished your tea? When they finished the operation. Oh. Doctor said if he pulls through, he'll probably live life as a cabbage. <laughs> what sort of cabbage? Um, what sort of cabbage? A spring cabbage, a savoy? Neil, this is difficult enough for us already. No, no, no. It, it's just that if he's a spring cabbage, you'll have to plant him in limey soil, and your garden, <laughs> your garden's very acidic, you know. Neil. I blame myself. It's all my fault. No, there, there, Helen. It's not your fault. All the gardens around here are acidic. <laughs> it's something to do with the soil, you see. Neil. <clears throat> Please, we'd rather be on our own just now. Thank you. I understand. Look, if there's anything more I can do, I'm just yeah. next door. You won't forget. No, you? fine. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> it means well, but... Neil can be so thick at times. I mean, when we said David was going to be a cabbage, he thought we were going to keep him in the garden. <laughs> He's going to get the best of care. David's going to be a cabbage. We're going to keep him in the fridge. <laughs> A 
What's that you're drinking? Sherry. Sherry? You don't drink sherry. Gareth, it's Christmas. What's the music? Some Mungo's Junior School Choir. Mungo's <laughs> Junior School Choir? Gareth, it's Christmas. Gareth, you bastard, you've eaten all the good ones and left the bloody old coffee cream. <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> you like? Essence of pine and strawberry potion or mixture of musk? Uh, I don't mind whatever you think best. Ooh, these muscles are extremely tense. There really is a lot of stiffness. Yes, I know. related to your pate. If your hair is black or brown, your life will be a doddle. But if you're ginger, then you're up the creek without a puddle. <laughs> oh, yes, it's utterly, utterly rotten to be ginger. <laughs> it doesn't matter if one's poor or rich. I don't want to be a cringer or a whinger, but if you're ginger, life could be a bitch. <laughs> Fergie's hair was fiery red and she's no longer here. Poor Van Gogh got so pissed off that he cut off his ear. <laughs> if Rhino Blair had dyed his hair, would he be a ginger beer? Oh, yes, it's utterly, utterly rotten to be a ginger. <laughs> Oh, yes, it's utterly, utterly rotten to be ginger. I say to you that it's not really fair. If one happened to singer, ginger, fringer, <laughs> would one have a flaming head of hair? <laughs> when it comes to scarlet bonces, oh, how the mighty fall. He lost two elections, Neil Kinnock's what he's called. <laughs> was twice unlucky cause he's ginger and he's bald. He's a worker and he's bald and he's ginger. <laughs> Red-headed Englishman can't sit in the midday sun. My freckled skin's as white as alabaster. But five minutes in the sun and mine is not. Now I look like a blistered crimson lobster. <laughs> I sit in the shade and join the rocks. <laughs> On the beach once is a blondie, but is it natural? With a ginger-headed person, it's easier to tell. Cos I must confess, a red mustard crest grows in my dingly dell. It's a stick a mile when you're ginger. Oh, yes, it's utterly, utterly rotten to be. You need grit, you need guts, when you're dunking ginger nuts. It's utterly, utterly rotten. My wife's angry when in bed Drop my trousers, she sees red It's utterly, utterly rotten to be Bouncing balls of Boris Becker Rated carrot around his back It's utterly, utterly rotten Beneath these pants of cotton It's utterly, utterly rotten to be ginger And that's that We, the undersigned, think it's time. As you may know, things have been going rather badly for me lately. Since I was made redundant, I started drinking rather heavily. Put my family through hell. 
and Audrey, my wife, left me and took the kids. We could have patched it up. I know we could. If it hadn't been for the car accident. <laughs> then this morning, I had a letter from the clinic. The tests are positive. <laughs> Apparently, I've only got a few months left to live. Anyway, enough about me. The bride and groom. Yeah, yeah, I've got this snake right, and his name's Harold. <laughs> yeah, and I've got a hamster. I had an hamster. <laughs> so did Harold. Oh, <laughs> Alice Cooper. So you like the presents I bought you then? Yeah, this gold-plated diving watch is brilliant, mate. Oh, it's great. And uh, th this computer game and uh, look, these 20 cartridges that came with it. Th did you have to pay for them separately? Separately, yes. <laughs> God, that's great. And this TV! It's gonna be ideal for the bedroom. Thanks a lot, mate, really. Cheers. Thanks for the boxer shorts. <laughs> You're welcome. I had to give them back to you sooner or later. <laughs> Many people associate Spain with cheap package holidays, crowded beaches, and the barbaric slaughter of bulls. But it has to be said, Spain has more to offer than that. <laughs> Let's avoid the usual loutish behavior of Brits abroad and discover beautiful countryside, picturesque castles, and let's not forget the generous Spanish hospitality. Wine, senor. Cheers. Or as they say in Spain, cheers. <laughs> yes, with just a little effort to get off the beaten track, hopefully we'll soon discover a sense of history, delightful characters, and... <laughs> Not forget some generous Spanish hospitality. <laughs> Play. Yours to discover. With a little imagination, you'll soon come across gem rem, flamenco dancers, and traditional craft. And let's not forget a generous Spanish.
in black. There's a lot of uh, controversy or even controversy at the moment about uh, bad taste on television. But of all the things you can do on British TV, swearing, sex, violence, nothing causes more of an uproar, nothing causes more anger than being cruel to animals. Isn't that right, Karen? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, especially if you take a lovely, lovely furry little kitten like this and... They know, don't they? They know. <laughs> Seriously, though, we, we wouldn't... Uh, we wouldn't do anything like that, would we, Gary? No. <laughs> I mean, we like to experiment with comedy, but uh, even we wouldn't microwave a cat live on national television. <laughs> we certainly wouldn't. So... Here's one we did earlier. Hospital. <laughs> Hospital. It's a place where very ill people go when they're poorly and get a bed straight away. <laughs> but that's enough of the fairy tales. <laughs> I've come to visit somebody today. Can you guess who it is? <laughs> is it Bertie the Smoking Beagle? <laughs> The jaywalking hedgehog. <laughs> no, I've come to visit Johnny. I'm over here, Billy. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. Hello, Billy. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. <laughs> How are you today, Johnny? Oh, I'm in complete agony, Billy. <laughs> I'm in excruciating pain, thank you very much for asking. <laughs> Johnny's had an operation. I wonder if you can guess what sort of operation. <laughs> I'll give you some clues. <laughs> You've had a nose job. <laughs> no, Billy, not a nose job. Here's another clue. <laughs> I know, you've had your brains removed. <laughs> no, not quite, Billy. I'll give you one more clue. See if you can guess what operation. <laughs> one skin. <laughs> Three skin. Three 
really know a song about Johnny. One, two, drip on my... Four, not anymore. <laughs> people who argue because we don't like conflict i don't like any breakfast cereals <laughs> do you know what i hate about christmas well it's those tacky christmas tv specials that are obviously recorded months in advance <laughs> they don't do that do they uh, yeah, stick the box on why what's on it's the men's final from Wimbledon Live. Hi, Nigel. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Sweden. I hope you'll be happy during your stay with us. Thank you, Lottie. Uh, please be coming in. Jan is in the living room. This is Jan, my husband. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the first leg of the exchange. Oh. That's a nice painting. <laughs> At least you made it okay. The roads in Sweden can be how you say, a right bugger. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. You like the painting? It is Lottie. She's the artist of the family. Very clever. Oh, yes, I'm very good at the ceramics. Look at the handle on this. That's very nice. But like all artists, she can be a little crazy, you know? Jan, I think you embarrass our guests. I'm sorry. Now tell me. Have you noticed any major differences between Sweden and England? Um, and the roads are a lot bigger. Why? Wider. Well, that's a lovely view. Out of the window, I mean. Me? Yes, we are very lucky here. Maybe after I show you, take you for a drive in the Volvo, have a crash, it's perfectly safe. Too long, son. It's too long, Jan, I think our guests would prefer to relax after their journey and take a sauna with us. A, a sauna? Uh, no. I, 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 we haven't brought our cozies. Your wife, Nigel, she has a big sense of humor, I'm thinking. <laughs> I bet also she likes to rub the wild goat's milk into her private parts, yes? <laughs> Do you and Helen ever live out each other's sexual fantasies? Personally, I like to dress in what is clothing. It makes me feel so good, so sexy. How about you? Uh, members of our local amateur dramatic society. So we moved to the house in West Didsbury. Because it had a bigger garden. Yeah, no, it's very interesting, though, Helen. Do you achieve orgasm through oral stimulation or during intercourse? <laughs> well, I have a bigger garden, you see. <laughs> I'm a cunilingus person myself. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts in Sweden is that, then? My erections are so strong, so powerful. <laughs> Nigel, I'm thinking you have trouble maintaining yours. <laughs> Don't worry, I have something in the fridge which may help. <laughs> well, I've had enough of this. So have I. Shall we go? Yes. Oh, my God, it's true what they say about the Swedes. They're, they're so 
They're so boring. vicinity of all road on the night of 13th right that might have been about nine o'clock wasn't it maybe come on you've been eyeing the place up for weeks haven't you perhaps you went there specifically to meet freddie parker and do this job didn't you i might have done you were with him weren't you i was not yes you were wasn't yes you were I wasn't. oh yes you were oh no i wasn't <laughs> Yep, I've been riding horses since I was a boy. I guess I, I guess I never met the right gal. <laughs> I got this from your Aunt Mary, these from your Uncle John, and these. <laughs> from your nephew, Stephen. God, your family are crap at poker. <laughs> yeah, road traffic accident. Now, I'm gonna fetch Mrs. Jenkins for the eye den. Try to be a bit more sympathetic this time, right? Yeah, okay. It's not a very pleasant experience, but we'll try to make it as easy as possible. Just check we're ready for you. <laughs> well, uh, just be a minute. <clears throat> Not quite ready. <laughs> And you don't fancy a spot of dinner, do you? And the canton does a nice long catch <laughs> And then, of course, after Hendon, I've spent a couple of years as a good old Bobby on the beat, you know, which, uh, which I found very rewarding. Oh, and... Have you got Roger in there or not? <laughs> Phillips, we're coming in now, right? Take a moment, Mrs. Jenkins. All right, Phillips, open number seven. Number seven? Not this one. <laughs> number seven. Mrs. Jenkins has waited long enough already. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> oh, thank God. You sure it isn't him? Absolutely. He's a much taller man altogether. Oh, and there's another thing. What's that? He doesn't normally have a broom up his bottom. <laughs> you see, Ron, what happens is, right, we go round the sun 
and the earth is revolving on its own axis and because of its mass and the revolving of that mass it creates gravity right yeah i understand that but why couldn't they put humpty together again <laughs> If you don't know this man, then you probably know someone like him. He's one of those people who can't take anything seriously. deal Bob we win it or we bin it okay it's a team game and you're the star player but never forget I'm the captain you better cut the steel Bob or it's your balls on the barbecue you'll be finished in this business I have something to tell you you know things haven't been going well between us lately I've tried to make it work but I don't I don't love you anymore, Bob. <laughs> In fact, I've come to despise you. You don't listen. You don't care. You don't treat me like a real person. Well, I've had enough, Bob. I'm going to live with another man. <laughs> the man I've been sleeping with for the past eight years. <laughs> he's kind, he's affectionate, and he's your brother. <laughs> I never imagined myself saying this, Bob, but... But I hope you rot in hell! <laughs> Sandwich! <laughs> this is indeed a serious and grave matter, which it is now your duty to pass judgment on. You and you twelve alone falls the enormous responsibility of determining whether this man who stands before you accused of cold-blooded murder. It's a lot down there. Hello, Bob. Hello, Martin. Bob, I'm afraid I got some very bad news. Oh, yeah. It's my father, your Uncle Andrew. He's dead, Bob. Martin, that's, that's, that's terrible, was it? Was it, was it sudden? He was hit by a car. Oh, no, Martin, that's, that's really, really terrible, tragic news. I'm, I'm so... Bobby, you're still there. Give us your wallet. You're not going to use that, are you? Give us your wallet! Give us your wallet! I'm not dead, you know. It is possible for a woman to fake an orgasm. Who said I was faking, darling? Shawfoot, defender of the people, and I seek enlightenment. Yeah. Thrice have I enlightened thy father, and thrice shall I enlighten thee. What knowledge do you seek of the old wrinkly one? 
I seek thy guidance. I seek the route that will take me to the lair of the Beast of Thrall. The way to Thrall's lair is long and dangerous with many perils. And only one whose heart is true may find him and slay him. Is your heart true, Gawain, son of Shawfoot? <laughs> it is. Then listen carefully. For there are but two ways, bus or train. <laughs> I should prefer the train. <laughs> so be it. The train it is. First, you must take any train from Victoria to Clapham Junction. <laughs> This train does have a buffet car. Aye, <laughs> it is furnished with an buffet car. But beware, for soon shall they run out of small change. <laughs> and soon shall they try to ensnare thee in the long queue of frustration. <laughs> Do not eat what this buffet car does offer, for it is poisoned. <laughs> and will bring you naught but tummy trouble. What must I at Clapham Junction? You must go to Platform 5. <laughs> but beware, the masters of bewilderment, for they shall try to confuse you and lead you in the wrong direction. <laughs> How shall I know them? By their uniforms. Shabby coats of devil's blue and silly little hats. <laughs> From Platform 5, take any train to Crawley and then alight at Red Hill. Uh, there, the keeper of the gate will ask you from whence you came. What must I say? Say this, and only this. I got on at Mersham, mate. Have you got change of a tenor? <laughs> from thence you must go by bus or taxi to the high street. And there, you will find the lair of the Beast of Thrall. Upon the high street. Next door to the Argos catalogue shop. <laughs> Thank you, Master. I leave at sunrise. Folly! Folly! If you leave after 9.30, you can get a travel card. <laughs> and remember, he who takes the cab will arrive sooner, but will have to listen to the interminable drivel about Fulham's chances in the cup. <laughs> now, be gone! Thank you for calling Travel Information Exchange. You are held in a queue and your call will be answered shortly. <laughs> this is the Spanish town of Pamplona, home of the famous Bull Run, where wild bulls stampede through these narrow streets and the young men of the town show off their bravado by placing these ribbons upon the horns of the bulls as they pass by. As you can see, there's rather a lot of clearing up to do after the bulls. No, no, but... no, it's not the bulls. It's young men's, they shit themselves. Pugh is going to have her first baby. For Penny and her husband Alan, this is the most important event of their lives. Like many women, Penny is a great believer in natural childbirth, the process of giving birth whilst immersed in water. So it's no surprise that Penny and Alan have decided that their baby will be born here, at the Jacques Cousteau maternity unit. <laughs> Already, 
Penny is fully dilated. Her baby is about to be born. Speaking seagull turns into a turnip, stick him in an Irish stew. To kangaroos marrying leap year, life is so strange. Oh dear, remain and me. Teacher in the spotlight, watching his pupils dilate. Psychedelic wardrobe, watching Tony Curtis open in the garden fate. I need an easy line, so ABC. Life is so strange to me. And me. And me. Can't be arrested for putting your left sock on first. Knees up. Salvador Dali's a trombone and no returns. Car horn, trumpet, doorbell in my head. Where has all the flour gone? The baker said. And the sitars play. Cucumber on washing line. Cucumber. Copulating rhinos, playing snakes and ladders, puffing on their ten wood vines. Sir Edmund Hillary, are you getting high? Life is so strange to my mind's eye. And my no. Left, right, left, right. Get your bleeding egg kite. Mind the gap. Hey! Tap dancing lobsters on the black pool towel to the rhythm of a crazy cop. Goodbye. Well, we've come to the end of our holiday special, and we've had a really good time, haven't we, Gareth? We most certainly have. But I'd like to take the opportunity to say, at this time of year, when it's really cold and damp, I think we should remember old people. 
Yeah, that's right. Because they burn for hours. 